What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So yesterday, we had a big time announcement. New hardware, and it's actually from Valve. It's called the Steam Deck, and it's a hybrid device that'll play all of your PC games, and it immediately drew comparisons to the Nintendo Switch, but not the Switch we have now. The Switch a lot of people are hoping Nintendo would announce, that being the Switch Pro. We're gonna go over all of that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about the Nintendo Switch OLED model after a new report was published online going over how much more expensive the device is to create for Nintendo over the original Switch, and it didn't go over too well online. And we're also gonna be talking about Cyberpunk 2077's return to the PlayStation Store as we had some new sales charts that were posted online, and it looks like a lot of people really did miss this game. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below and ring the notification bell so you can keep up to date with all the uploads here on the channel. And we're gonna start today with that Nintendo Switch OLED model as pre-orders did go live yesterday. They announced it early in the morning and then later on at 3 p.m. Eastern websites just started posting it online for pre-orders and it looks like they also started taking pre-orders in certain stores. Now, I did post about this on Twitter ahead of those pre-orders going live. Unfortunately, that all happened before this episode of Newswave was able to go live. So if you wanna keep up to date on all of those like smaller announcements just randomly happen, make sure you follow me over on Twitter. But I did manage to get one of these pre-orders, the white Switch OLED model with those Joy-Cons and I actually grabbed it in store at GameStop. So if you're still looking for them or a pre-order of some kind for this, whether it's the neon or the white, check out your local GameStop to see if they have any extra because when I went in, it didn't seem like anyone was really like lined up or anything. I think one other person pre-order it, so maybe they have some extra stock for anyone still looking. Make sure you check that out. Also, we did get the release date for Pokemon Unite on the Switch. We can head over here to Twitter. This from the Pokemon Unite account saying, Pokemon Unite on Nintendo Switch, July 21st. And it looks like they have a, a login bonus. Get Zerara. That's just for logging in before August 31st. Looks like they have a whole trailer here and all this showing off. They also go over for mobile players. Don't worry, you'll be able to get Zerara as well. We'll announce the details here, so stay tuned. It will be heading to mobile devices uh, later on with the Switch releasing here next week. And I I'm not a big, MOBA fan myself. I, I guess it's interesting to see Pokemon cross over with that type of game. And the more they've shown it, I guess the more it makes sense there. It's, it's clearly gonna be a big hit on mobile and probably on the Switch. It's also a free to play game that's going to be held up with, yeah, microtransactions. But the fact that it's free, you can just download it, try it out, see if it's something you'd be interested in and maybe want to continue with. That's at least what I'm going to do. So of course we can also talk about it on the podcast uh, that week, Saturday night. So we'll see what Pokemon Unite is all about next week. Oh, and we had talked previously about Nier Automata when it went to Game Pass on PC because the port was so much better than what was put on Steam. I mean, the Steam port was so bad, fans had to come together and put out all these patches and modifications just to make it at least playable for a lot of people on PC. Well, Square did get the message after a lot of people were asking for a patch with that Game Pass PC version kind of being on the scene. And it looks like that patch is now out and a massive uh, kind of list of all of the fixes and the change along. We see this here. I mean, seriously, there's a lot going on here and it does look like they at least kind of went through a lot of the suggestions and really just complained about that Steam version of Nier Automata, like borderless video settings, fidelity FX, HDR, anti-aliasing, UI textures for 4K, approximately 270 UI textures for icons, backdrops, UI elements, etc. The cutscenes have been fixed up, global illumination, uh, I mean, ambient occlusion, bloom, uh, like a whole laundry list of bug fixes. They basically went in and I guess repaired most of the game here. It's it's a shame it released in that state in the first place because I did hear a lot of people say, you know what, I, I either refunded it or I just haven't touched it since I picked it up and attempted to play it. So at least now there's a patch and if you were someone who dropped it, it might be worth going back, installing this patch and see if it's any better for you. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Valve and their new piece of hardware, that being the Steam Deck. It's this handheld device that'll play all of your games on Steam, but also on PC. Let's first though, head over here. You can take a look at it here. They have a nice kind of spinning animation of it so you can see the front and the back. And immediately the first thing I noticed outside of obviously the screen taking up most of the front there were the dual touch pads, the full analog sticks, but then the button and D-pad placement because the button placement for ABX and Y are in like the top right 
and then the D-pad is like way off in the top left. And I'm looking at that like, is that going to work? Well, IGN also had quite a bit of hands-on time with this system and they seem to say that it's fairly comfortable to use, whether you're switching between a touchpad and the analog stick or the buttons. They didn't really have any issues. On the back, there are even several more buttons that you can map however you would like, and that makes sense considering for PC games, you're probably going to have to map out a bunch of different buttons for it. And looking at the device, it looks fairly solid, and for what I'm sure Valve was going for here with the technology packed in, it's uh, a fair enough size, is what I'll say. It does look pretty big overall, it weighs over a pound, so it's not like a little pocket-sized device, but it does appear they are going to be packaging in a carrying case with any of the SKUs that they've listed. First though, let's take a look at the specifications inside the device. I went a bit more in depth over on Spawn Wave Plus, so if you wanna see a bit more of a deep dive on the device itself from all angles and the specifications, make sure you check that out, and I'll link it down below in the description. But here we go at the top with the CPU is a Zen 2 with four cores, eight threads, boosted upwards of 3.5, Gigahertz. Then we have the GPU, which is an RDNA 2 uh, based GPU up to 1.6 gigahertz, giving this device 1.6 teraflops. The RAM is 16 gigabytes of LP DDR5. The main display is a seven inch touchscreen sitting at a resolution of 1280 by 800. I saw some people online who were disappointed that it's not 1080p, but most likely Valve realized, much like Nintendo did when they created their Switch, that the difference just really isn't worth it when it comes to cost and what they can save by just having a display of this resolution versus 1080p. And if you think about it, there probably isn't a massive discernible difference when you're sitting there holding the system in front of you, but you would notice the difference in frame rate, which you're going to get a better frame rate with something like a 720p resolution for that 1280 by 800 screen. So Valve obviously realized this, had that in mind, and here we are with a 1280 by 800 display for the Steam Deck. Overall, this, you could really draw comparisons to something like a portable PlayStation 4, which becomes even more impressive when you look at the pricing for this system, which is something that Gabe Newell said in an interview was the most important part. They wanted to be very aggressive with the pricing structure for this. And take a look at this here. Starting at the bottom, 64 gigabytes of eMMC memory comes on board at a $399 price. It does come with a carrying case, but then we can move up to some of the more expensive options. 256 gigabytes of NVMe SSD. That is faster storage over that eMMC memory. So keep that in mind. It does come also with a carrying case there. And then you can go all the way up to the top SKU at $649, 512 gigabytes NVMe SSD. That is the fastest storage as outlined by Valve here. And it looks like they have one other perk, a premium anti-glare etched glass. So I guess if you're say, I guess outside or just somewhere where there is a lot of light and could cause glare on the screen, that'll at least help to cut down on that. It is a shame that that is uh, pretty much as just the top skew at $650, but I guess they figured they want to throw something else in to make it feel like you're getting more for that money. Now, reservations are set to go live today and they are looking to start shipping the Steam Deck out starting in December, which I guess that means as they get reservations, they'll kind of put it in a queue and as they have more and more of these devices available, they'll be shipping them out going through, I guess, 2022 even. So. I'm excited for this system. We've had portable PCs for a little while now. I talked about like the GPD Win. I know there are a few others that have been making the rounds recently, but this is from Valve. They've even imprinted the logo on the back, which I think is a better strategy than what they did with the Steam Box, which is what people are pointing to right now. They're like, well, did you see what happened with that? It's just, is this something that Valve is really gonna get behind? The problem with the Steam Box is that all these companies came up came up and just like started just throwing all of these systems at Steam. Like you went on the page for the Steam box and they were just everywhere. It was a big scatter shot of systems. You didn't know what to grab. This appears to be much more focused. Now there are still some drawbacks, obviously the battery life, two to eight hours. I'm gonna lean more on the two hour side if you're playing something that 
is uh, is a bit more intensive and then obviously the size itself there's also a dock but as it stands currently it's being sold separately and we still need some more information around pricing and even availability on that but yes it is drawing comparisons completely to the switch pro because to be honest this just runs right over the switch like it's significantly more powerful and significantly more capable you can also load whatever os you want on it which means the emulation community is going to have an absolute field day with this device that actually might be the part that i'm most excited about is to see how this handles say gamecube games or wii games or pretty much anything on uh, with when it comes to emulation so really looking forward to the steam deck keep an eye out today for the reservations when they go live and let me know if you're picking one up and if so which model next up let's talk about a new report from bloomberg now bloomberg is the same place that did talk about the 4k switch Turns out we didn't get a 4K switch, we got an OLED equipped switch, but they did also call the 7 inch OLED display, which tells me they at least have some sources when it comes to manufacturing, which is mostly what this report is about because it appears they outlined how much more expensive this switch OLED device is compared to the current $300 switch and i'll give you a second how much more expensive do you think say this oled switch is compared to the regular one if you said ten dollars more you would be correct at least according to takashi machizuki with bloomberg as they went through and kind of figured out some of the pricing from different institutions and research and came up with a few different numbers here the screen three to five dollars more the memory going from 32 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes about three dollars and fifty cents and a few extra smaller parts comes out to about ten dollars more but remember nintendo did raise the price $50 over the $300 price that they had with the current Switch, which when that got out online, didn't go over too well because Nintendo clearly could have just left this at 300 and they would probably still be making a decent enough profit and margin on it. No, Nintendo is doing something different here. Basically, I think Nintendo has been wanting to raise the Switch price for a little while because the demand has been so high on the system, even four and a half years into its life that's not typical for systems usually we'll see a system kind of have its price cut down so it can it can more or less uh fix or try to keep up with demand that is slowing right it'll try to even it out a bit but that's not the case here with the switch so nintendo's like well if people are buying it this much as a 300 dollars system i wonder if they'll buy it as much as a 350 dollars system with something that's easy to market like oled i mean seriously it's a logo they can put up they can say look how much better this screen looks and all this basically nintendo is doing business thing the business doing business things is the way i can see it here and as i've kind of mentioned to you guys several times over the last several years these are corporations and they're looking to make money any way they can from us yes from our perspective as a consumer we're like wow they really they bumped the price up that much for a ten dollar increase when it comes to parts and manufacturing now there's more than just that when it comes to getting these systems to store shelves but yes that that is what's happening here again a business doing business things i think the more concerning part about this is as bloomberg mentioned sony and microsoft are going to be keeping an eye on the switch oled because if nintendo can really show up mark the price up 50 dollars with i mean let's face it minimal upgrades like when when sony and microsoft showed up with the ps4 pro and they showed up the, the xbox one x they had to do quite a bit of engineering and work under the hood to make it feel like it was worth upgrading to for the extra hundred or two hundred dollars or something there and even then it still didn't sell as well for sony and microsoft compared to the base models that were cheaper so they'll be keeping on this because they can just kind of play around with maybe the memory inside of these systems or a few other things that aren't as costly as doing a full redesign I, th I think I could see Sony and Microsoft trying something similar. I mean, do you don't think that Sony's looking at the current demand for the PS5 right now and, and thinking, we could have really sold this thing for $600, especially now they're seeing Nintendo with this OLED model going up to $350. I have a feeling Sony is certainly kicking themselves right now. Next up, let's talk about that Loftwing Amiibo that is out today alongside of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD. This was the Amiibo that caused quite a stir online when it was revealed that its functionality was more or less fast traveling uh, in Skyward Sword, but it does look like there's going to be a bit of an issue here when it comes to the supply 
of this amiibo on release day. We can head over here to IGN where they say in a statement provided by Nintendo of America, the company says the, the Zelda and Loftwing amiibo figure is currently impacted by unforeseen shipping delays. As a result, only a small portion of the Zelda and Loftwing will be available on its scheduled July 16th launch date. Additional shipments are delayed until August. We will ship additional amiibo to retailers as soon as they arrive. So I probably don't have to point out the irony here with an amiibo that will allow you to fast travel in a game having some supply issues around a delay in shipments. But either way, here we are with this Amiibo. I mean, it's a shame for people who pre-ordered it and really wanted it, but you're also gonna see, I think, prices when it comes to resellers who are able to get this just go up at least over the next month or so. I know Amiibo collecting has maybe gone down a bit over the years. I remember it was super popular at one point. I just don't see as many people talking about the Amiibos, but this is a Zelda, Legend of Zelda product during the Legend of Zelda anniversary, which is only going to increase its value from there. And it's alongside of the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD, which to our knowledge is that's the only Amiibo that works with the game Anyway, so here's hoping that Nintendo can kind of get these shipments back on schedule, maybe even get these back into stores earlier than expected. But at this point, look towards August for that Loftwing Amiibo. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Cyberpunk 2077. It's been a little while since we've talked about this game. It was obviously all over the news at the end of 2021, but since then it's been pretty quiet. We did hear it was heading back to the PlayStation Store. I believe that was on June 21st, but we did get some sales charts for the PlayStation Store released, and we can take a look to see how it did in about the nine or 10 days that it was out. I can't imagine it did that well with a third of the month available for sales. And, uh, well, it's, it's number one. Okay. So number one in the US and Canada, and then number one in Europe. That means in the US and Canada, it beat out Grand Theft Auto V for that top spot. And then in Europe, it beat out FIFA 21. Wow. Okay. So if anything should make us feel disconnected from, I would say the mainstream audience, uh, this is probably it right here with Cyberpunk 2077 topping the sales charts. Now, I mean, really looking at it, there are probably people who have a PS5 now who didn't, you know, at the end of last year. And I mean, Cyberpunk 2077 has its issues, but I was able to at least play through it on the PS5 with pretty good performance. I mean, when it came to frame rate and all of this, it was fine. It's just more or less crashes and some weird glitches here and there that may have caused hiccups in quests, but I was at least able to get through the game. Really, I think this the overall hype of it did die down, but to the point where people may have been browsing the store, saw it and be like, oh yeah, I remember, I heard about Cyberpunk 2077, it's back on the store, I might as well grab it now, maybe it'll go away later, so I might as well lock it in here, but there we have it. I don't think anything's really gonna be learned too much from that situation with uh, what happened with CD Projekt and Cyberpunk 2077, because we had heard it had sold over 13 million units really without the PlayStation Store going through this year, and they'll try to launch it again, I assume, at the end of this year with a next-gen version with the PS5 box art and the Series X stuff. And yeah, this is probably gonna be a very good selling game for CD Projekt going forward here. And looking at these sales charts is just working to prove it. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're taking the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, are you thinking about picking up the Valve Steam Deck? It looks like 34% said yes, 66% said no, and I did see some people say, you know what, I I have to see more about this device because I like we just heard about this thing, we're seeing some hands-on time, but I need to hear more from people who maybe buy it and they give their own you know impressions and reviews on it. I think that's a great idea because yes, it is technically an expensive handheld, but in the PC gaming world, this would be considered cheap, especially considering where GPUs are now. It's gonna come down to more or less, I think, the benchmarks. And that's what most of us want to see. How does this device really fare with some of these games like Control, like a Death Stranding, like Doom, right? And what's the battery life when you're actually playing these games? Like we're turning up the brightness all the way, we're turning up the highest settings. How long can that thing really last off of its dock or when it's not plugged in? So certainly still a lot of questions, but I think a lot of people are also very interested in it. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from NATO saying, Persona year of announcements. Remember how the year of announcements went for Sonic? And yeah, I think the was the only announcement we got at that time, like a wallpaper for your phone or something. So I did let Sega off the hook for that one because Obviously there was like a serious pandemic world changing issue there with COVID. And 
I don't think Sega saw that. I don't think anyone really saw that coming, especially since they were probably planning that out for a couple of years prior. Like, all right, we're going to have this whole Sonic anniversary. We're going to do all these announcements. We're going to get these merchandise collaborations done. We'll announce the big game at the end. Remaster would be great. And then COVID hit, and they were they themselves said they were thrown through a loop. It wasn't great. Half of their games were, like, delayed is all over the place behind the scenes, much like it was pretty much across the gaming landscape. So, again, I, I kind of cut them some slack there. I'm really hoping that the Persona anniversary and all these announcements they have set up for the entire year, though, goes off without a hitch, because I think it'd be really cool to see some big-time announcements for Persona. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today was the Valve Steam Deck. Let me know if you're thinking about picking one of these up, and if you are, which model are you looking to reserve? And then also, what about the whole thing with the Nintendo Switch OLED model and kind of the cost of production just being $10 more than the regular Switch? Does it surprise you that Nintendo bumped it up $50 with that in mind? And then what about Cyberpunk 2077 showing up to the PlayStation Store and then immediately topping the charts? Thanks guys for watching. Have a great weekend. I'll see you back here Monday morning, 8 a.m. Eastern Time for Newswave.